guys, what's up? It's Vampire Bride. Today I say goodbye to my Cooler Master Liquid Light 120, which has been a great cooler. It worked very well and I didn't have much negative about it. So I guess you could say that the bar was set pretty high when replacing it. I was a bit sad to see it go. Until I saw the Cheon M1A 240R CPU Liquid Cooler. This AIO sells for around $100. I'm going to start off by talking about the installation of the AIO. The installation itself was a bit of a pain. The screw holes in the radiator for the fans didn't actually line up with the screw holes on the fan. So I was kind of having to push down on the metal sides of the radiator to get it to line up. It took a little bit of pressure and I wasn't really comfortable doing that, but in the end it got it to line up and work out okay. Also the screws are already attached with these little springs, which is nice because then you're not having extra screws rolling around, it's getting lost. But at the same time it made them a little wobbly. And when you're trying to put the cooler down one time onto your CPU so that you don't have to end up wiping off and reapplying your thermal paste, it becomes a little bit of a process. But once it's done, it looks great with the dual ring RGB on the fans and also the RGB in the middle of the cooler. Some people may not like the Game Deus logo being kind of front and center on the cooler, taking up most of it, but I really don't mind it. I think it actually looks nice. There were no instructions with this liquid cooler, and I feel like while many of us already would know what to do and how to install it, there are people just getting into the world of liquid cooling that may not know exactly how to put the proper fitting on it to fit their processor or just do the overall installation where all the wires go and everything. So it would have been nice if it had came with a manual. That being said, you can look stuff up on your phone as your computer's down for the install. But when you get a product, you want everything you need to get that product up and working. So I feel like it would have been nice if it came with some instructions. At idle, the temperatures run in the lower 30s. The temperature got up to 58 degrees Celsius during Unigen Haven benchmark and up to 64 degrees Celsius during the Intel burn test. The temperatures topped off at 64 degrees Celsius. That is the highest they have gotten and that was after being at 100% usage for quite a while. While doing the rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark, the temperature got up to 51 degrees Celsius, and in game, playing Rise of the Tomb Raider, it got up to 53 degrees Celsius. So I got some okay temperatures, but I really think that they could be better. I want to get some better, more high-end thermal paste and retest all the temp tests to see if that makes a difference. Upon application, this thermal paste was really hard to press out of the little syringe and then it just wanted to kind of stick at the end of the tube instead of getting onto the processor. So I'm very worried about how well it spread across the processor. It reminded me more of when you're cleaning off the old thermal paste from the processor when applying new thermal paste instead of brand new thermal paste. I would also like to try to overclock my processor again, but I don't trust this thermal paste enough to do that right now. I do think that applying new thermal paste will help the temps get a little bit better, but that's a project for another day. If you're planning to pick up this liquid cooler, I would recommend getting some new thermal paste also to go with it and not just using the thermal paste that comes in the box. There is an abundance of lighting settings from a heartbeat effect to a twinkling effect and of course just static. Just like I mentioned in my case review, I tend to keep my lighting settings on a static setting. So for me, usually I put it on blue, but since getting the case, I've been using the rainbow setting quite a bit. So I've also been setting my AIO to the rainbow setting. All of the blinking lights of the other lighting effects are just too much out of the corner of my eye, especially when I'm playing a game that already has a lot going on on a lit up screen. But that is just a personal preference. I will say that the lighting effects are pretty cool and some of them are quite odd, unique, and different. Not just the same view you see all of the time. All the lighting settings are controlled with this little remote. There are arrows to go back and forth through the lighting settings. You can go back if you skip a light setting that you were trying to go for, unlike on the case where you would just have to cycle all the way through them again. 
this little remote also controls the fan settings, which I think is kind of unnecessary because the fans are fairly quiet in the first place. I don't actually see any reason of turning them down, especially when you compare it to my old fans, which were actually quite loud. Sometimes you do have to click the buttons on the controller multiple times to get them to register, but it also works fairly well from a bit of a distance. I can sit back in my chair and still press the button and get it to change the lighting settings. You don't have to hold it right up on the case to get it to work. There is no software to go along with the Qion M1A, but I don't really think that it's necessary. It's quick and easy to change it with the controller, as long as you don't lose it, that is. Other than the radiator hoses now going across my RAM because of the position of the radiator, this cooler looks 100% better than my other one. It's brighter and cleaner looking. If I were to put the radiator in the front of the case, it would still be the same way. I just might do that, but I do want to get a couple more fans if I decide to go that route because I would then go ahead and do a push-pull configuration out of the front of the case. Talks about having a sync all option to get all the RFGB features in your case matching, but my motherboard doesn't have the connection necessary to use that feature. This AIO comes with a little box for you to hook up your power for the AIO and your fans with space for extra fans. It holds six fans and has two LED ports, but it does seem a tiny bit bulky. The cable management in the case was already a little bit stressed, so I'm having an issue with putting this little black box also in the back of the case. And of course, putting them anywhere in the front of the case would put a whole bunch of cords in your view. There is this little crevice under the control panel and behind it where you screw in the SSDs, but it fits quite nicely. You then just have to manage all of the cables around it. Overall, the Qion M1A 240R CPU liquid cooler looks great and works well. I'm happy to have it as a new part of my build, and I think it improves the look of my PC. I would recommend it to anybody looking for a 240mm radiator AIO, as it looks great. It definitely has the look that I would like to go for in my build. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe for more videos to come.